Hey guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at a link shortening service that I've been using for years, even before I got into uh, home self-hosting. And the application we're gonna take a look at today is called URLs. Now, there have been uh, several requests for a Docker container called Schlink or Schlinks, um, and it does basically the same thing, but in my opinion, URLs is just easier to set up, and that's why we're gonna take a look at it in this video. But before we get into all of that, we do have some bills to pay, so here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxedo Computers and the Tuxedo Aura 15 Gen 2. The Aura 15 Gen 2 comes with an AMD Ryzen 7 5700U. That gives you eight cores and 16 threads while only sipping 15 watts of power. This means that the 49 watt hour battery will get you hours of productivity while on the go. You'll also get the AMD Radeon RX Vega 8 featuring eight GPU cores that clock up to 1900 megahertz. The Aura 15 Gen 2 supports up to 64 gigs of dual channel DDR4 RAM. That way you can have as many Chrome tabs open as you need for your productivity. With a thickness of less than two centimeters and only weighing in at 1.65 kilograms, taking the Aura 15 Gen 2 will be a breeze. You'll get a 15.6 inch 1080p screen that covers 95% of the sRGB color space with a peak brightness of 300 nits. The Aura 15 Gen 2 comes loaded with I.O. ports, including USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C Full Feature DisplayPort 1.4, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A, two USB 2.0 Type-A ports, and an HDMI 1.4 port that includes HDCP, 4K UHD at 30 Hertz native. You'll we'll also get a gigabit LAN port and a two-in-one headphone microphone jack, as well as a micro SD card slot. For more information or to configure your own Aura 15 Gen 2, check out the link in the description. So I've actually been using URLs for, for years now, even before I got into self-hosting and I really like how easy it is to set up. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in today's video. So let's jump over to their website and take a look at that in addition to some additional resources they have made available. So here we are on urls.org and right up here at the top, we can see that URLs is an acronym of sorts for your own URL shortener. So I kind of dig that. I like how they managed to work that in. And here we can see uh, just some screenshots of what the dashboard looks like and then information you can actually get for each of the different links that you share. So even if you don't have a short URL like the one we're gonna look at in this video, I managed to get dnb.wtf uh, over on uh, Porkbun. You don't have to shop from there, but that's where I get my domains. Um, so we're gonna use dnb.wtf as our link shortener. Even if you've got a really long URL, you can still use this for URL tracking uh, more than being a URL shortener. So there's, there's kind of multiple functions that this will do uh, depending on what you wanna use it for. Over here, we can see that there is a download section to download URLs from their GitHub page, as well as an install guide. There's some credits down here. Uh, we've got install and upgrade up across the top up here. Uh, this is this is actually how I've been using it for years. I downloaded the or downloaded the zip file, uploaded it to a hosting provider that I've got, and I've been using it that way for, for three years, I think. Um, but this is not how we're gonna do it. Again, we're gonna do this in Docker. Uh, so, so kind of none of this in here really makes a lot of sense for us to cover. But if we jump over to their GitHub page, um, we can see that there's obviously you can kind of look through the files here and see what's going on behind the scenes. But if we jump over to their GitHub or their Docker Hub page, you can see that this is the official Docker image, 10 million plus downloads, 199 stars. Uh, if we take a look at the tags, uh, we can see that uh, this was updated four days ago, so they are actively maintaining it. And it is available on... Um, it uh, looks like the x86 platform, so any of your desktop processors, as well as ARM processors as well. So it should be pretty much compatible with whatever you want to throw it on. Um, but if we come back over to the overview page, uh, we can see supported tags and relative, uh, respective Docker files. We've got a quick reference. Again, all of the different uh, supported architectures are all there as well. But if we get into how to use URLs, um, they break it out into all of these different Docker command line um, inputs so that you can deploy it, the individual containers uh, via command line. And I just, this isn't terribly intuitive the way that they put this together. So I've gone ahead and put together a Docker Compose that we can just run in Portainer and get this up and running very, very quickly. So this is the Docker instance that I have up and running. Uh, and there are some default uh, URLs in here that were just there for obviously for um, for promotion of their different uh, web assets. You can delete these if you want. Uh, but here we can see the short URL. Basically, it would be your domain name slash whatever is here. 
the original URL, the date that it was um, that it was put in here, an IP address. Of course, I'll be blocking those. Um, and then we've got some clicks. Like basically, it shows how many clicks each URL has received. Now, if I come over here and open these up like so, and then uh, obviously these are all redirecting where, where they want to be redirected, but uh, blog.urls.org uh, isn't working. They should probably fix that. Um, but if I refresh this page, now we can see that we've got one click on each of them. And if I open this up uh, here, I can see uh, again, the, the original URL, the short URL, the long URL, traffic stats over the last 24 hours. That was the click that we just did. Uh, all time, again, will be the same thing, uh, and you'll get more more graphical data here uh, versus just the 24-hour uh, uh, tab that's there. We've got traffic location uh, that's kind of built in natively. Uh, so, of course, I'm in the United States, so that's where it showed me uh, doing that. But if I were to use a VPN or something like that, or if somebody else were to be hitting this, we might see other countries uh, pop up over here as well. Uh, traffic sources, um, refers, DMB.WTF. So if you were to share this somewhere else, that would be a refer, and that's what you would get for that information. And then share, again, the short link, the long link, stats, and then the quick share if you wanted to do that. All of that's there. You can share on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we do have an admin interface over here we can take a look at. Um, and if we come into here, we've got uh, tools uh, where you can do... Um, uh, link short to the bookmarklets, so you can just drag this up into your bookmark or up into your your like your bookmark bar in your browser and shorten a URL right from there. Uh, you've got social bookmarklets, uh, prefix and shorten, uh, a secure password passwordless API call. Uh, we've got plugins up here as well uh, to allow hyphens in short URLs. I always activate that. I like to be able to do that periodically when I need to. Uh, we can do bad, random backgrounds if you wanted to do that. And now every time the page loads, we should get a different background. Um, so just kind of a just a little thing they've done there. Uh, random short URLs. Um, if you wanted to anonymize or or whatever, I guess not anonymize. If you wanted to just have random character strings for your URL shortener, you could do that. I don't like to turn that on. I like to be in control of my URLs, uh, but that is something you can do as well. Uh, and they've got additional, uh, you know, just sample plugins and things like that. So if you wanted to develop your own plugins, they've got uh, good samples in there that you can take a look at and uh, kind of go from there as far as how their coding uh, works. So, uh, we've got, and that's manage plugins. Uh, and over here, we've got help, which should jump us over to a help page where we get more information like we already saw on their homepage, their actual website. And of course, once we're here, uh, adding a URL to this is super, super simple. So what we'll do is like HTTPS, uh, dbtechreviews.com. Uh, we'll just do like dbtech, like so, and we'll just click shorten the URL, like so. Give this a second, there it is. It's been added to the database. So now if I just click right here, there it is, it just redirected me right over there. And if I go back um, and refresh, now we can see that we do have one click on there. And again, if I take a look at the logs, we can see that that just happened. So that's how easy it is to add a URL to the URLs database. With all of that out of the way, uh, of course, you will need a domain name for this to work. You'll also need some sort of a reverse proxy, uh, again, whether it's Nginx Proxy Manager, Caddy, Traffic. Uh, in my case, though, I will be using Cloudflare tunnels for this, and I do have Cloudflare tunnels set up on uh, on this server. So what we're going to do is just jump over to Portainer, take a look at the Docker Compose that I put together, and then, uh, and then just get it deployed. So with that said, let's jump over and take care of that now. So here we are in Portainer, uh, and we're going to go ahead and just jump over here to Stacks. Uh, we can see that I actually have been looking at Schlenk. Um, again, I just, I prefer URLs. It's just easier to administer, install, those sorts of things. Okay, so here we are on our, our Docker Compose, our stack, if you wanted to call that over here in Portainer. Uh, we've got a version three up here at the top. And then under that, we've got some services. Uh, basically, we've got two services in here, one for the database and one for the application. Uh, as we saw before, uh, our image is MySQL for the database. We've got a command down here for uh, an authentication plugin for the MySQL native password. That's fairly standard in a lot of databases here. Uh, restart policy of uh, always, basically, if your server reboots, um, it will automatically come back up without any intervention. Uh, there are other cases or other settings you may put in there, but I feel like in this case, always is probably the right option. Below that, we've got some environment variables for a root password, a database, a user, a MySQL user, a MySQL password. Um, Change the root password, uh, definitely change the root password. Leave the database URLs alone. It's actually looking for URLs. Uh, your user and your password, change those if you want to. Definitely change the password, bare minimum. 
Below that, we've got a URLs uh, container. This is the uh, second service here. Our container name is some URLs. Of course, you can change that to whatever. Uh, we've got uh, links DB and it depends on DB uh, just to help connect to the database more effectively. Uh, so this application will wait for the database to be ready before it tries to do anything. And that's kind of what that's there for. Uh, the ports, we've got the server side on the left of that colon there and the container side on the right. Uh, so make sure if you're already using port 8080, change just the 8080 in that string right there. Uh, don't change the colon 80. Um, so that's kind of what's going on there. Below that, we've got some environment variables of your site. is basically what URL are you going to use? Again, I'm going to use dmb.wtf with that HTTPS in the front there. Uh, we've got a user and a password uh, for the URLs, user and password. Those are the credentials you'll use to log into your dashboard. So please change those. Don't leave those as they are here. Uh, below that, we've got a database host of DB. Uh, we actually declare that up here at the very top on line three right there. Uh, that's what's going on there. Um, and that's going to be the, the host where it's going to look for the database. We've also got a database uh, user and password. Uh, if you change these here, make sure you change them up here in the database itself. Uh, but do not change uh, the, 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 the database line right here. This needs to stay URLs. So uh, once you've got all of this and you're happy with all of the way all of that looks, you can scroll down, click on uh, deploy the stack and uh, click OK if you need to. We'll give this a minute to do its thing. And just like that, we can jump over here and take a look at the database, make sure that uh, everything here looks good. Uh, once it is good, we can come over here and take a look there. And we're seeing Apache 2D foreground. That's usually a pretty good indicator uh, that we're good to go as far as uh, the container being up. So what we're gonna do is go to DNB WTF, oops, WTF, and make sure you tack on admin. If you just go to db.wtf or of course, whatever your URL is, it won't work. You need to add the admin uh, just, just because that's how they've got it set up. Oops, so connection refused. We're gonna give this a couple more minutes then. A few moments later. Okay, so after just uh, less than 60 seconds, really, uh, I refreshed the page. Here we are, now it says install URLs. I didn't have to change anything. I just needed to be more patient. So what we're gonna do is click right here where it says install URLs. So here it says our HT access has been uh, updated or created. Uh, we've got some tables in our database that have been created. And here it says, hey, everything's good to go. So now you can click on URLs administration page. And here we are, uh, it just automatically logs you in for the first time. Of course, moving forward, you would need to log in and out appropriately using the username and password that you created in that Docker Compose. So that's it, that's how easy it is to get URLs up and running so that you can have your own link shortener with some, some actual data about how many clicks each link is getting, kind of where those uh, clicks are coming from. Theoretically, of course, a lot of people these days are using VPNs, but it should give, give you a rough idea at bare minimum how many different clicks you're getting on each of your different URLs. Um, and again, all of this will be available in the description down below if you'd like to go ahead and uh, follow along using the Docker Compose that I created. Um, and of course, as I've mentioned in previous videos, you know, I do have bills to pay. So I take on sponsors to help me pay those bills as well as, you know, putting ads from YouTube on my videos. If you're interested in supporting the channel, uh, you can do that by becoming either a channel member for a few bucks a month. That's just kind of how YouTube runs things. But if you join my Patreon or dbtech.fans, you can join the, either of those for a dollar a month and get ad-free access to all of my content over the past few months uh, once, since I've started kind of doing this, uh, this membership thing. Uh, so again, if you'd like to get uh, ad free access to my content, uh, you can do that for as little as a dollar a month, less in some cases, depending on how far in advance you want to pay. So uh, with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I do want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your time with me today. And I will talk to you in the next video.